everyone. Welcome back to the Price to Sell podcast. I'm your host, Matthew Campoli. And on this lovely afternoon, we have an amazing guest for you guys. We got one man who has single-handedly sold over $1 billion worth of sales in real estate. Diamond Club winner, Lifetime Achievement winner. We're going to talk about his experience in hotels, which he's never, we've never talked about before, ever, on this podcast. So that's going to be new and fresh for you guys. Pre-construction, everything. This guy's a master. We have Mr. Sean Gandhi. Thank you for coming. Round of applause. Is that for me? No. That's for Thanks, man. Basically, basically. I appreciate you're, that. You're, you're known in these streets, huh? I, yeah, hopefully in a good way. So to start, I brought you something, bro. Oh, what? That's, that's for you. Dude, this is... And the boys here at Neighborhood Creative, so... This is insane. This know? is when I... Did this fall off a truck? Because <laughs> how did you get this? <laughs> no receipts, right? <laughs> Thanks, bro. So especially for you, you drink? Uh, well, uh, yeah, I do. Uh, this, especially something like this, I will. Mm, you're a pretty skinny guy, right? I figured that you won't drink. You're Italian, right? Yeah, yeah. Italians drink just uh, vino. Tequila? Vino. Vino, I got you. I got you. Or you Sambuca. Take a shot of that? You sure? He, doesn't, he actually doesn't drink. No, okay. okay. Sambuca we drink, you know, in our, in our espressos, um, you know, the whole, whole nine yards for Italians. I got you. Nice Montenegro. But this is my favorite tequila. Italians so. are like Indians a little bit, right? I guess so. There you go. Oh, we're going to leave this here. Go ahead. It's going gonna, gonna to take a nice seat in the middle. Thank you, man. It's all good. No That's problem, huge. That's not even like a small no gift, problem. so thank you so much. Well, no problem. Whoever's giving me a gift next, you got... You got you to gotta <laughs> match gotta this or do better. <laughs> you got to match this or do better. So yeah, let's get right into you, man. Yeah. This is awesome. Um, tell us a little, bit about, a little bit about Sean Gandhi, quick bio, background, what you do. Yeah, so we've been selling real estate for about 15 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, pre-construction, started in resale pre-construction, and we're in the hotel business. So when I say we, my family, uh, we got uh, a Hampton Inn by Hilton, and we just recently built a Hyatt, six room, hundred and six level, 123 room property at Queen and Goreway at the edge of like Brampton Vaughan, kind of like, you know, in that Highway 7 mm-hmm. sort of uh, area. And it's like one of the best properties you'll see in the GTA, I'd probably go out there and say, you're going to come and see us, right? We can we can pop some Julio there. I'll pop some Julio. So it's probably the best uh, hotel in the GTA, not downtown Toronto, okay. obviously, but the GTA. Mm-hmm. We've got a full bar, a nine item, uh, nine menu item, nine item menu, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and all hardwood fl- laminate floors throughout. The rooms are all sweet. It's a beautiful property. So we just built that one. And uh, yeah, that that's me. Do you Hotels, have a spa? real estate. Is there a spa? No spa, no spa. Okay, okay. So I'm getting, getting Valentine's ideas. Yeah, I know. Okay, I know, right? sorry. Um, yeah, it's amazing, man. And we'll get right into, all into hotels, but you're with which broker? Remax, Remax, Remax Real Estate Center. How long? Uh, about maybe six, seven years. Okay. I have my own little private group called Saatchi Realty Group. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I've been with Remax for about five, six, seven years, somewhere around there. That's awesome, Between man. Between five and seven. Yeah. That's amazing. So let's get right into hotels. Yeah. I think it's... Um, I got, I picked up a, a buyer for hotels last year, just to become friends since. Um, and through him, I haven't been able to source him anything. I've been trying. Uh, but through him, I've learned a lot about hotels and it's pretty, pretty interesting business or investment mm-hmm. style. So I'd love to get into like just how the whole side, the whole hotel business works. Yeah. So hotel business is, is a good business, uh, definitely. Um, you know, kind of thought in, in a couple of years ago when Airbnb kind of, you know, popped off, everybody thought it was a little bit in trouble, right? Mm-hmm. So just like taxis and uh, Uber, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So same sort of deal. But uh, hotel business is good. Um, you know, if you're a single operator, you know, you got to be there every day. It's just like any other business. You got to be there every day, kind of uh, watch your staff and make sure everything everything is going on, on par. That's kind of how we do it. We got a owner's touch on everything. Uh, got to go by the brand standards, take care of everything like that. And probably you won't find uh, many hotels just for sale like that. It's mm-hmm. more word of mouth. Off market. It's a big boys club. 100%. Yeah, you, you got to go. trying to get in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, invite yeah. me. So my, so yeah, so my <laughs> father, my father sells a lot of hotels actually. Okay. Like, so he's a big hotel seller and been doing it for about 20 years. Yeah. So most of his deals are all multiple repped. Yeah. Right. And uh, so like dual representation. So he's representing the buyer and the seller. Mm-hmm. And then like they stay with that person usually because now that person knows that property. So for the next 10 years, you know, yeah. the person who sold it to the person who bought it. Now the, the guy who bought it is selling it with the same person and 
so forth and it goes like that and that yeah so that's kind of like the chain of events so that's why it's kind of hard to break in because it's a big boys club basically yeah for right? sure yeah. small circle it's a small circle for how sure. um what do the commissions look like on a hotel sale it's like a flat fee Oh, okay. They don't. They don't really do well in my experience. Yeah, it's not really. Uh, and even the commercial base, like, I remember, basically, you would get paid more for selling a house mm -hmm. at two and a half million than you would for selling a five million dollar piece of land. Yes. Okay. Right. So, like, same with hotels, like a flat fee. So yeah. So it's not going to be like exponential, like people think it is. It's it's definitely not, but mm -hmm. uh, flat fee. Right, six figures, but you know, like yeah, yeah. But flat fees, you know, it's not it's just not six a, figures. Just six figures. That's, whatever, that's right? no biggie, right? Yeah, so yeah. You can buy one of these. Don Julio. Um, what? So what's so attractive about a hotel for an investor? Uh, maybe it's like you don't have to be there all the time, right? You can kind of let it run. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, that would probably be attractive. You know, you get a, some cash flow going. I mean, that's really it. But then you're really looking at appreciation at the end of the day, maybe build a portfolio of properties together sort of thing. Uh, you see that more in the States than here, really. But yeah, like, I mean, probably that would be it. You know, it's, it's an attractive business. Like yeah. just kind of the returns are good and just being able to host whenever you want and you don't have to be there all the time. I mean, you can. Uh, that's how we run our properties. But yeah, definitely you don't have to be there all the time. Yeah. Yeah. The appreciation, when you say it's, it's been like a decent appreciation play, is it does it necessarily maybe move faster than other investment styles? Like what do you mean? Uh, like just by maybe buying like a plaza or like a, a house. I you mean know? the the thing is the thing is with the hotel it's like you get into like a pip list right. Mm. So your brand if you're with a major brand every time you sell it every couple of years they need a, a like a pip so they want you to a property in for, like they want you to. Uh, fix up the property, yeah. bring it up to brand standard, change the carpet, mm -hmm. change this, change that. So, you know, it's not, you're not really going to buy a hotel for one year and sell it. It's mm -hmm. not really mm -hmm. like that. Like, you'll probably wait, you'll find people selling before their PIP, that sort of thing. Yeah. And the new owner, you know, getting an idea of what that PIP is and what they got to do and that sort of thing. So it's not like as uh, short term like that. It is a little bit more long term. Yeah. Definitely. It turns into like one of those things where you get it, you maybe get it, uh, you know, appraised, take the money out and buy another one and so forth and so forth. Yeah. yeah. It just sounds like a big game, you know? It is a big game. Because you hear them like the hotels are for sale, like 20, 30, 40, 50 mil, you know? Yeah. yeah. There, but you don't, but obviously, you know, like I know, you don't need that much down, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, so, you don't? No, 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 no. Okay. You're going to, you know, you're only going to need a certain portion of it really, yeah. right? So. Maybe 25%, something like that. Oh, okay, so you still have to, okay. Yeah, yeah. Still got to come up with some funds, yeah, right? Yeah, for like sure. Some Julio funds, right? Yeah, Julio but, funds. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah. don't need the full 20 mil. When you see somebody bought a 20 mil hotel, you're like, 20 mil, but you don't really need 20 yeah, mil. Yeah, for right? sure. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to get to some more Julio funds. Sure. And that's the pre-con game. Yeah, pre-construction. A lot of Julio funds there, right? Yeah, yeah, pre-construction. We build it. Hard work and dedication. That's it. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about pre-construction. And you sounded very passionate about it. We spoke about it before. Yeah. Um, Let's get right And you, you were... One billion in resale, yeah. right? Yeah. So why, after such a amazing career, you know, such amazing stats in resale, yeah. why are you focusing on pre-con now? So basically, uh, I noticed in resale, you can't really pull the numbers that you want to pull. You know, uh, most agents don't know this, but selling one, two homes a month is a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. It's, it's not simple stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So people think like, oh, like... You know, all I got to do is sell one home a year. Most agents aren't doing that. You probably know the numbers better than I. How many people sell a home a month? Oh, I don't know about that. I know. I think the, the stats are like, okay, let's say we have 70,000 agents in the GTA, yep. give or take. Yep. I think 40,000 of those are doing one deal or nothing. A year? A year. There you go. Right? There you go. So, and then again, there's that stat like 95% are doing 5% of the business. That, that's what it is. Arguably, maybe even less are doing more. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So. So, yeah, I can definitely yeah. agree when you say. So like agents get two. caught up into this whole like Instagram. You watch Instagram, TikTok, you get caught up. You see other people selling, buying, selling, buying. Right. But it's really not like that. Like, you know, uh, especially in resale, a small amount goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Right. You get paid right away. All that sort of stuff. So, like, I mean, um, you know, doing that amount of deals, I, I noticed the the reason why I really made the switch from. Uh, resale to pre-construction was that you couldn't really put up the numbers that like big numbers in resale as you could in uh, pre-construction, mm -hmm. right? So you could do 30, 40 deals a month easy in pre-construction. Not easy, but you know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, 
You could actually That's put very up doable. numbers. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you know, uh, and most, if you look at the top list, a lot of them are pre-construction guys. Mm. You know, a lot of, you can't, I mean, you can't be on the top list without having like, a pre-construction element. Globally. There you go. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, if it's even through Canada, you yeah. see it now, people selling throughout Canada. Yeah. You know, the GTA buyer is obsessed with real estate. Mm -hmm. You know that. Yeah. You know this, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm talking about real estate at my mom's house, my dad's house, my neighbor's house, the gas station, laundromat. I don't go to laundromat, mm -hmm. but if I did, probably talking about real estate. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? For sure. Yeah, yeah, for it's sure. It's a hot topic. For sure. And everybody wants to know, and everybody's an expert. And uh, when you go to sell something, they know better than you, mm -hmm. right? Obviously, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And the GTA buyers on the whole are obsessed with real estate, which is a good thing, right? But mm. they're obsessed with real estate probably because we've probably seen the most lucrative gains anywhere. Yeah. Worldwide, right? Yeah. So the GTA buyers, and that's why like, You'll find a lot of uh, like Miami. Recently, you see stuff from Miami here. You'll see Orlando. What you got? Some stuff from Miami. Florida, Florida yeah, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. What, what do you got? I want to buy something in Fort Lauderdale. Talk to me, man. Sell Let's it go. To, can Let's it, go. Can can I'm not selling it. My place is a gem. Okay, you got no a one's place touching there. that. Okay. I got three Rottweilers outside. Okay, okay. No one's okay. touching my house. Okay, okay. Yeah, but yeah. okay, so but you're not selling there. Are you selling there? I can through referral partners. Okay, 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 okay. okay. I, I've looked into getting a license. Yeah. But um, I just I'm the type I just like dive into the deep end. Try it out myself, then I'll preach it. Mm -hmm. Not nah, preaching it. If I do Airbnb, you might hate me. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm good with that. It's all good. <laughs> you know what? That like Airbnb, just like Uber, it grows yeah. the market. Yeah. The sales go up on the whole. Yeah, yeah. And hotels and Airbnb are different, mm -hmm. right? Like, I know for me, like I don't really stay in Airbnbs. To be honest with you, I want the hotel vibe. Yeah. I, if if you got a bar, even better. Yeah. At our height, we got a bar. Don Julio, Blue Label. Let's go. Azul, whatever you want. Okay. We got it, right? You slapping but, the bell? Yeah, of course, right? Okay. But uh, so, I mean, you know, the Airbnb game is not really affected the hotel like that. It's a different, it's a different, and, and it raises the overall sales. So it's, it's a different experience, man. Definitely. Like hotel experience is a hotel experience. Definitely. Airbnb Definitely. experience is an Airbnb experience. It's Definitely. not like it's like you're really taken away. Definitely. Someone wants the hotel, you want the waterfront property, you want like all the amenities, hotel. Definitely. You want your own like little experience with your significant other or your yeah. family, Airbnb. So let me ask you something. Which yeah. brokerage you're with? EXP. EXP? Recent. So, so where, where, where are you, where, what about yourself? Like what's your history? With real estate? Yeah. Or, oh, let's, let's ask the host. Yeah, let's ask you. Uh, six years in the business. Yeah. Um, been a solo agent, team building now. So we're going to launch an episode where I talk about my journey building my team now. Mm -hmm. um, social media has been like, everything for me in terms of a lot of my lead gen but i come from a really good network you know yeah so people look at me like like oh like you get all your business from instagram i get a lot from instagram but like i i'm a big networker yeah i'm in i'm in all the rooms you know like i'm always out there like i was every weekend i was out restaurants clubs whatever for whatever sure. the setting for sure. i'm networking for sure. i was a barber for nine years right nice so i always had that in me to like want to network and talk to new people meet new people that's why i do a podcast because i like to talk for sure sometimes too much yeah so what's your next level up um, it's going to, I want to take my, my team to like some crazy numbers, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like whatever Ryan Serhan's doing, that's what I'm doing. Wrong. Okay. Okay. I got you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I want to be doing like over a hundred million in volume. Yeah. Annually. Yeah. Plus. Yeah. You know, like minimum. Right. Yeah. So it's not like I'm not aiming for small stuff. Like I think I've maxed out as a solo guy. Yeah. Um, probably a little more juice in the tank, but I want to start multiplying with my people now so i'm at the same point yeah i i i'm i'm max solo wise mm -hmm. i can't do it right yeah. so I'm, I'm building my team same thing right yeah so you know anybody wants to get at me get at me uh yeah. info at sean gandhi or on my instagram at sean gandhi. you just take my you just take my perspective guys yeah right i'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Dean. <laughs> you want to sit right here yeah. Dean, we gotta we're gonna have to like um yeah <laughs> So uh, we're, we're we're on the same sort of yeah. I'm building my team as well. So I'm yeah. looking for young and aggressive agents right now, right? So, yeah. you know, actually young doesn't matter which age, but we're looking for um, agents to grow the team and kind of you know see where that takes us as well. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And you want to keep the precon as a focus with this with the team? Like I said, man, mm -hmm. Greater Toronto uh, area people and even people downtown. Yeah, it we're obsessed with real estate, right? Everybody's obsessed with real estate. So whether it's a uh, you know, a condo in Miami or a, a detached house up in Florida or whatever it is, right? Um, uh, definitely pre-construction will always be an element of our business. And plus, 
you know, just like you, as you grow your network, you have high network, uh, high net worth individuals with you. Yeah. So they want to plug their money somewhere, for right? Sure, for sure. So, you know, and, and when you're an expert in it, you know what, if they come to you, like, like pre-construction, I think why I've been like relatively successful would probably be because I don't look at commission. Like that makes me different from the other agents. I don't look at I commission at all. We I look at that. volume. Yeah. I want volume. Yeah. And sometimes when you open the door with a, with a different developer, on the first one, you got to do them a solid. Mm -hmm. And the next one, they'll do you a solid, yeah. right? So, I mean, you know, we don't look at commissions. You pl you know where to plug people. You know kind of what to look for. And you know all the red flags, what, you know, that sort of thing. So, when you have people around you that want to invest and, you know, you're the person they trust, you could throw, that's kind of who I've always been, right? Yeah. So, you know, throw your money with us and we'll put it all together. We'll do it all together. And most commonly, a lot of the developments I sell in, we buy ourselves. Yeah. Right. Which so cool. we become part of the pool. Yeah. So it's not only like, hey, man, like during closing time, I get I get a bunch of calls. Like, hey, man, where are we going with the lawyers? Mm -hmm. and no problem. We'll all go to the one spot. This lawyer will give us a good deal. All good. Let's do it all together. You know? Yeah. So that sort of thing. Right. But pre, but pre construction will always stay a part of my business. And to be honest, if you're trying to be successful over here, you got to have that element, especially in real estate. You got to have that element with you, too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So. Clearly, you love to network. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. where, where does that Where does that come from within you? Like in your past, is like a, a I think I natural just like, or I think, yeah, I think I just like making friends. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's like something you're born with a little bit. Right. Yeah. So it's like you know when I called you, actually, I was in South Beach. Okay. Right. When I when me and you first got in touch, I was in South Beach and I saw it and I'm like, this is all me. Yeah. This is all me. So the podcast. Actually, yeah. When you shot me that text. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, what's up? <laughs> What's up, baby girl? Yeah, that's true. We should talk about that for a second. This guy just like straight reach out directly to me. South Beach, was it Memorial Day weekend or something? I can't remember. Yeah. I can't remember. I paid your all. I don't know what I did. I yeah. can't even remember what I did. Yeah, you paid my office, Probably after actually. a night of heavy drinking, right? Probably, yeah. A lot of, a lot of hoobios. Took you three days to call me back, I think, off of yeah. that one. Yeah, or, that's the standard procedures. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, well... I mean, that's the flex, right? Like, you're always working. Even on vacation. I'm in my... I'm in South Beach, you know... Uh, at the Clevelander and, uh, you know, picking it up or the Fontaine Blue, just picking it up. What do you want? What do you want to buy? Like, we're all good. So, I mean, you know, always on, right? Mm -hmm. But you're always networking. That's a part of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's huge. You were a barber. That's what, that's what kind of like, that's I was talking a chame chameleon. I say it all the time. I was yeah, a chameleon. Yeah, I had to yeah. do like, I had all the different walks of life, age, ethnicities, mm -hmm. interests. I knew every sport, movie, TV show. Yeah. Because I had to talk about that shit for half an hour every single time, you know? For sure. So, I couldn't just be there and be like, I had to hold it down. Yeah, that's why everyone sure. came back, man. Yeah. I mean, I did cut hair well, yeah. but they came back for like the conversations. How old are you? 31 now. 30, well, you're a young guy, man. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. You're a young guy, man. Yeah, I don't think so, but I appreciate that. Six years, so 25. You started real estate when you were 25. Yeah, 25. Awesome. With man. braces. Yeah? Yeah. Let me see your teeth. Yeah, I look good. Hell yeah. I look it better good. look good, man. Yeah, yeah. It looks good. It looks good. $11,000 on this mouth. Yeah? I jaw surgery too. Why? Overbite. Okay, okay. I yeah, got yeah. you. I Pretty got bad. You. I got you. But we're here now, right? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Dean. <laughs> it's like a shot. Yeah. So, um, yeah, let's. So, you mentioned that you guys, so you, you've been getting into the development game. Mm -hmm. How does one start? Man, I, I'm a big, strong believer in pooling your money together with other people. Agreed with that. You got to be able to partner. You mm -hmm. need strong people. Like, you want to talk about network? You need strong people. You invest your time with people that invest in you, mm -hmm. right? And you need people around you that trust in you and that you trust. And you got to partner with them. Start with one. Sort of like my best friends are in partnership properties with me that I didn't even get paid commission on. Yeah. I don't even care for the commission. I've done that too. You have mine. to, you, 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 you throw them out like gifts. Yeah. You trusted in me for your, you know, for this. Yeah. We're going to buy this property. One time, one of my best friends, I had a, I, uh, hard work and dedication, right? I was standing in a line to buy a property and I called him from the line. I was already buying it for myself. I said, look, I'm here. You want half? You could take half. He took half. We doubled that property within two years. Mm -hmm. So we bought it for a mill and it was worth two mil within two years. Wow. So, I mean, that all happened from a phone call in line to, hey man, this guy bought his $2 million house with me. Yeah. And you know what? I own one. Yeah. So let's see what we can do. Even sometimes they get apprehensive. Like what's going on here? Like, you know, like, yeah. You sure you're not getting uh, any? Um, it's all good, right? Yeah, it's all good. But that's you got to have strong partners in your in your in your corner for sure. You gotta, you know, sometimes you gotta 
you got to do stuff for them, they, they, it comes full circle, right? Yeah. Strong believer in karma as well, right? Mm -hmm. Karma is a big thing, right? You do good even when nobody's looking. I've had deals that I've did where other agents have sometimes sent me the wrong commission, right? And what do you do? They're not going to notice ever. It's a yeah. splash in the bucket, right? Like on the co-op? Yeah. Like Five more? Uh-huh. Like yeah, more? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Five, ten thousand dollars, whatever. Mm -hmm. I call them, look, hey man, you screwed up on this commission here. Fix it up. Yeah. Probably the member of their team got got their head taken off. Yeah. But hey man, you know, and then I had a I had a situation where my assistant on one of my deals put five thousand dollar commission on somebody else's deal. Yeah. And guess what happened? They called me and said, Hey man, did we work together? I said, No. He said, Oh, well, you know, you paid me by accident. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's full circle, right? Yeah, so yeah, you gotta yeah. you gotta be a trustworthy person and gotta, you know, that's at least my method of work, right? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that fully, man. Yeah. I think uh, I think it's um, power in numbers and, and doing stuff with it with other people because there's a lot to eat out there. Yeah, and and you know what? My father taught me a lot of this because my father he started as just an agent, right? Immigrant came to this country. He did a lot of deals with uh, Italian developers, like way back when in the Vaughn area. Definitely, right? Why but, would you say Vaughn in Italian? Uh, whatever, man. Maybe you you tell me. Is I that don't like know. A, is that stereotypical? No, no, it's not stereotypical. Are you just like, assuming that no. they're Italian because no. they're from? I'm kidding, bro. Yeah. So, <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> yeah. we love Damiani Jewelers. Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but I was saying that, like, uh, you know, he we started with nothing, and then he built into one hotel like a travel lodge, you mm -hmm. know, then mm -hmm. like a comfort inn, yep. then like a super eight. We had a super eight even at one time, then Hampton Inn, now a Hyatt, like, you know, and hopefully next we'll see what we'll, we signed on for some more Hyatt. So we'll see what. Are you next. holding these properties? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So you guys have a really cool portfolio then, eh? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's good. And we, and we do have, you know, three or four pieces of land in uh, Mississauga, in Brampton that we're doing some things with that are going to be some big things coming on them. Right? Yeah. Some big things coming. We're not builders. Even yeah. even tomorrow, let's say I ever get involved in a residential project, which is going to be the next evolution. Mm -hmm. We team up with a builder. Yeah, you know, and mm -hmm. that that comes back to partnerships. I'm building the partnerships right now on the selling side, right? Yeah. So whatever's good to me, we're gonna hand it back, and we're gonna partner it up. Learn. You can't be ignorant enough to think you know everything. We don't know nothing when it comes to you know building resident. I know how to sell residential. Yeah. Just like you, right? But we don't know. Maybe you're Italian, so maybe you know how to build. You know how to build? I mean, again, we're going with stereotypes here, but uh, not at all. No. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, just, so I just failed all my Italian people out there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So I mean, the same thing. You got to partner up with people. Exactly. And you, you know. But I have my other Italians for that. There you, you know go. What I mean? Yeah, yeah. There right? you go. It's called outsourcing, my friend. There you go. Yeah. You just got to stick with the way you're strong at. For and sure. You, and you just you hold that down. For sure. Outsource the rest. For sure. So let's. Um, nearing the end here yeah. but i want to speak on the numbers the, like the magnitude of what you've been able to accomplish already yeah. what are some tips because you know we have young josh out there who just started and he's like i want to sell a billion it's like how do you how do you do it so hard work and dedication mm -hmm. um you got to keep working keep working keep working um you know <laughs> like do everything with honesty don't cheat the system don't do any of that never look at your own commission Look at it like it's a numbers game. So you keep plugging away at it. And eventually, like, you can't make, you can't hit a home run on every hit, right? Hit a single, hit a double, get that home eventually, right? Build the connections. Like, always think long term. Don't mm -hmm. think short term. Yeah. You got to think long term, right? Because uh, eventually what, what you plant now is like a farmer, right? Real estate's just like farming, right? You plant the seeds, they grow, and then you, you know, you, you uh, nurture that and then you, you grow a full tree or flower or whatever you're, you know, uh, planting for. So that's what I would recommend. And if you're new, you want to join a team, get a mentor, learn off them, mm -hmm. figure out what's going on. Uh, make it, you can't do it side. It's got to be your primary job. You got to yeah. be going hard with it every day. And you got to do the stuff you don't want to do. Yeah. Like cold calling, knocking doors, Did whatever do that it is. Stuff? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I still like... No matter how busy I ever get in my life, mm -hmm. I do leases till this day. Yeah, yeah. And why? Because you got to keep your ear to the ground. You can't just be like, you know, too gangster or too, I'm too, you know, big for that or whatever. Get, doing leases, you know, it's triple the paperwork. Yeah. It's garbage money. Yeah. It's it's just garbage like all the way around yeah, right it is. and it's also like you'll like you'll do a sale and the guy's happy and then you do a lease for the same guy and he's like 
my tenant ran away. Like, what the hell? Yeah. This is your fault. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. So it's just too much liability. But you know what? You got to keep your ear to the streets. You got to mm. keep keep knowing what's going on. Get in that climate. Seeing what renters are looking for. Brush up on your skills and writing contracts. Making sure that's all set. You know? not to. I don't deal with the tenants. I'll deal with the landlords. But, you know, we do that because you're never too good. Mm -hmm. Just like my dad, till this day, will grab a broom and start mopping the hotel floor or yeah. start sweeping the hotel floor. Yeah. That can't ever leave you, right? Yeah. So, you know. Humble beginnings, my friend. There you go, right? I love it. Yeah, we're just trying to get like you, brother. And you. Yeah. And you. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to talk about my TikTok story? or what? I do, I do. I was just about to ask. <laughs> so <laughs> prior to this podcast, he uh, we're just talking about like Instagram Reels are down right now. TikTok's blowing up. I've been resistant to start on TikTok because I'm just lazy and I'll get on there, I promise. But he recently, he's a big TikTok user. I'm not. So we're just talking about the um, how hooked you can get on there. The addiction levels. TikTok. TikTok is addicting and dangerous. Addicting and yeah. dangerous. And here, we, let's, let's speak on the dangerous because he posted a video. Yeah. So talk about it. So I had a video. Um, so my name on uh, TikTok is Sachi Realty Group. So that's my, like my little you know mm. company like group here, right? So I post. I get all these random funny emails every time we send out emails. We get all these like random emails from people just kind of you know asking like they want something or whatever. And sometimes you'll find like people that are kind of like you know uh, immigrant uh, background. I'm, we're from an immigrant background, so no problem with that. So. Uh, I wrote an email, some some guy just responded, like didn't even take the time to get to the body of the email, just straight in the subject line, like four lines of like this funny stuff, right? Like I'm looking for a townhouse, 2,500 square feet, 700 end unit, Cambridge, Brampton, all sorts of spelling mistakes, all sorts of like everything. So I was like, whatever, I have this little thing I do on my TikTok. Sometimes I'll just take an email, one of the emails I get and I'll like, obviously I can see the name, uh, and, and whatever so but I'll blur out the name and I'll be like oh I'll just read it in whatever accent that person like whatever background that person sounds like they're from so it's an Indian guy so uh so he uh dropped this message and uh I just did a 15 second clip on my TikTok of it and I'm doing an Indian accent like oh Sean, and you are Indian. Indian I'm Indian myself okay, right so, yeah. so there ain't nothing wrong with that yeah. can I make fun of my dad can I make fun of my mom like ain't nothing <laughs> wrong I can make fun of myself yeah ain't nothing wrong with that so um so I just did this video I didn't even think anything of it right and like the next day it's like 5,000 views 10,000 views 20,000 and what did you do you did it in the accent I right? did it in the accent like, give, hey, a little, give a little sneak peek no I can't get it okay. I, 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 I already I already I already <laughs> apologized for this once I don't want to apologize for it again <laughs> so uh, I did it, and uh, s some people understood like it was just a joke, and some yeah. people didn't, and they were like um, unhappy. So I had like sixty six comments, people fighting in my comment section, like you know about like why did you do like this guy's a racist, and, and you all got fifty thousand views on it, uh, fifty thousand views after yeah. maybe forty eight hours, not even, yeah. and then uh, yeah, one guy just went crazy, started. Uh, leaving reviews on me everywhere, talking about I'm a racist person, check out my TikTok and don't, you know, invest with this guy and all this stuff or whatever. I mean, it is what it is, right? Uh, but uh, definitely realize that outrage marketing is like a, a way to go. So yeah. <laughs> if you're like, if you want to say some questionable stuff, some racist stuff, this this pod can go viral basically if, you, if you're trying to do something oh, 100%. like that. Oh, 100%. Yeah? Yeah. So I'm not trying to do that. So what do you have to say about Indians? I love it. I have a lot of Indian friends. I yeah. love them. Yeah. I love Italians too. Thanks, man. Yeah, I know. A lot of my barber clients are Indian. Yeah? Oh, yeah. A lot of your barber clients. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? The thick beards. Yeah. Thick yeah. beard, fresh fade. Yeah. Why'd you say thick beard? No, because we got thick beards. <laughs> we got sick beards. Look at your beard's a little bit still growing in, <laughs> it right? It is, it is. Yeah, I fell yeah. in dirt. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. But uh, I hear you. I hear yeah, you. That's, but I mean, it's it's the truth, man. It's the world we live in. But that guy yeah. went to a, a freaking far extent to go after you for, for like, there's comedians out there who will chirp and make light of all the different cultures. Of course. Right? Of course. Like there's there's a uh, Nima from, he's from Richmond Hill. Yeah. He's just, he, he has a, his Italian persona. I know, he's persona. so funny. He's hilarious. He's funny. And it, like there's so much shit on Italians. It's, yeah. it's hilarious. Yeah. You know? I guess uh, people just take it to heart, man. Well, he flipped out. And yeah. like luckily because he wrote his, uh, he was like belligerent in his complaints that like literally to Google, I'm like, what the hell? Like listen, they, they, they actually took it off. Mm -hmm. And then Facebook did the same thing. I was like, relax, man. This is just a joke. Like, yeah. I'm not racist. I'm 
probably more Indian than you, to be honest <laughs> with you, right? And uh, people were like, Sean, you got to get this guy, blah, 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 because now, like, I know his name, I know who he yeah. is or whatever. I was like, whatever, man, leave it alone. It's all good, right? Was he Indian we, too? Yeah. Oh. He goes full, it, go, it comes around full circle, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. like, whatever. And you know what? Like, um, like, I have, like, a lot of experience in real estate. So, like, we talk about, like, you know, like, when you first come in the business, like, you, you go through a situation where, like, let's say you're doing a resale deal, right? And somebody does something wrong to you. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you know it's a violation. Right? Mm -hmm. So do you call Rico? No. Yeah. Why not? So much work, man. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't do it because it's not so much work. Okay? Mm -hmm. Which is a valid response. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But like, like, you understand that like sometimes one day you're going to be in that situation where 100%. you might wrong somebody. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's happened to me before. Yeah. You know, like, where, you know, somebody's called you to say, hey, man, I want to see this property. And you're like, uh, uh, give me a day. And then all of a sudden an offer comes. You, like, it's weird, right? Mm -hmm. Real estate, the, the lines are sometimes like not so straight as you want yeah, them to yeah, be, yeah, right? Yeah. So you don't you don't complain on people because they're going to complain on you one mm -hmm. day, right? And the same vice versa. You always try to work it out with that person, yeah. right? Talk to that person, figure it all out and all that sort of thing. So, you know, we keep it in the streets. That's it. You know, you're not trying to take it to the next level. Because everything comes full circle. and Just have a Julio shot. Yeah, yeah. Just have a Julio, chill out. Yeah. At least give it the weekend. This guy didn't even give it the weekend. <laughs> he didn't even give it the weekend. Saturday morning, waking up. Facebook notification. This guy's a racist. <laughs> Dean is with me on this, man. Dean is with you. Dean knows how it feels, man. Dean, what do you think? I think he should be allowed to make fun of himself. Right? Uh, right? Why not? And that's what that, and wrong Dean, with that. And when Dean says it, Dean and Dean is right. Yeah, Dean means it, right? Dean means it. Hardest working man in the biz right here, Dean. Dean, show you hardest up. working man in the biz. We haven't given Dean a proper shout out yeah, in this man. podcast yet. You gotta, Dean, you're you getting the get proper shout cam. out. You gotta get him on cam, man. Well, this is Dean for now. Yeah. Dean Julio. What's up, Dean? How are you, buddy? So I love to end it off with yeah. um a nice piece of wisdom yeah. for the audience out there. Right now, I'd say Majority of our audience are other agents. Yeah. Let's speak to the new one. Let's speak to 2023 or just yeah, forget the new one. Let's yeah. speak to the struggling agent of 2023. Yeah. What is a piece of advice you'd give to them? Okay. This is a piece of advice I give to you, right? If you, everybody's disgruntled right now a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. With the numbers that are going up, selling ain't going well. You jump on your Instagram, TikTok. Number one, don't watch other people. Do not watch huge. other people. That's a huge tip. People are liars, number one. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the new thing? Like, I sold a property. All right. I post that I sold it. Now it's firm. Now it's closed. What is this? Four posts for, the, for one property? So it, it gets in your head, right? People aren't thinking like that, right? Mm -hmm. It's four posts for the same property. No, mm -hmm. people don't think like that. So one thing I would say is don't get caught up in the hype, right? Yeah. And then... Secondly is just put in the work. Real estate, like the funny thing about real estate is that like it'll all balance out at the end of the year, right? So if you're projected to do whatever it is, like, you know, 100 deals, okay? Maybe you'll do 40 in the first six months and then you'll do 60 in the next two and then zero for the last three. But somehow it'll always ba balance out. Mm -hmm. So just put in the hard work and, and oftentimes you'll find that you waste three weeks on a deal mm -hmm. that ends up screwing up. And then a deal will just fall in your lap. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yep. So just put in your work, mm -hmm. do what you got to do, stay focused. And eventually, even if it doesn't come out of that deal, it'll come out of another one. Yeah. And it's taken me like the last, like you should be hungry. You should. Uh, I remember like when I was an agent and you used to think like, how am I going to put up those numbers this year? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you probably yeah, battled yeah, with that. After an amazing year. Of how course. am I going to do that? Of course. How am I going to replicate that? Yeah, 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 yeah. well, you will. Mm -hmm. Just keep working. Yeah. And don't stop working. Yeah. The minute you get sassy and, you know, uh, fat and sassy, you're not going to do it. So I would say, you know, uh, definitely don't get caught up in social media and the Instagram stuff, number one. And number two, put your work in, whether it's paying off or not, keep at it. Keep at it, and eventually the chips will fall. Yeah. And when they do fall, eat it. Make it rain. That's it. There you go. Have a Julio shot. There you go. Amazing advice, man. Thank you so much. No problem. You've been bro. awesome. No problem. This is wonderful. You're going to send me a shot when you, you're going to send me a, a picture when you crack that? No, we'll crack it together. Yeah, we'll crack we'll it figure, together. Right yeah, I'll figure this. it out. Yeah.
Yeah, screw it. Why not? Jeez. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. If you can, uh, so for all your, your people out there that are watching, where can they find you? You can email me at info at S-H-A-W-N-G-A-N-D-H-I.com, SeanGandhi.com. You can get me on uh, Instagram at Sean Gandhi, or you can uh, get me on TikTok, Saatchi Realty Group, S-A-C-C-I-R-E-A-L-T-Y Group. And when you email him, don't put the whole email <laughs> body in the subject. Yeah, if you don't mind, you can split it up a little bit. Yeah, just throw it in. It's a quick little and subject heading, okay? If you so. try to see the video, DM me. I'll send it to you personally. Yeah, you have to delete it. Yeah, so yeah, I, I don't blame him. So. <laughs> and, and, and write an apology letter. So let's put yeah. it that way. Yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, to everyone out there, we're going to post his links in the bottom yeah. in the description. But to my people, we love you. Thank you so much for always tuning in. Please leave us a review. Five stars, nothing less, or I'll find you. And also like, subscribe, share, share with everybody. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Peace.